Hello everybody, we will discuss today quantification of basic event for non repairable components. So, fundamentally it is quantification of basic events. So, let us see that what are the contents of today's presentation. We will we will introduce uh, that what do we mean by quantification of basic event and then reliability and failure distributions will be discussed, failure density function and failure rate, hazard rate that will be discussed. So, the lecture we have prepared uh, following two books, one is Komamoto and Henley probabilistic risk assessment and management for engineers and scientists and Trivedi and Bobio reliability and availability engineering that is modeling analysis and application Cambridge University Press. So, so far we have discussed many things primarily the qualitative aspects of uh, industrial safety engineering. If you, if you recall from the first lecture till the last lecture that mean up to the um, analytic hierarchy process where we have ultimately uh, found out the best uh, alternatives. So, mostly we have relied upon the uh, qualitative concepts and followed by certain uh, algebraic or uh, mathematical operations. In between in both in, in case of faulty analysis some of the algorithms we have discussed, uh, but uh, we have not discussed that much of quantitative aspects of the uh, industrial safety engineering. So, today I think this is the first class uh, where we will be going into little more mathematical issues and I hope you all will enjoy definitely I will not go into that depth of mathematics that which will be difficult for you to grasp, but the fundamental basis of probability reliability uh, and distribution related things will be discussed here with the with the help of examples uh, in a very simple manner and I hope you will enjoy it. And when I talk about quantification of basic events, then you must know that basic events basically related to bow tie or other way the fault tree analysis, where uh, there in fault tree there is top event and there are several basic events. Ultimately, the basic events are those events which are basically alone or in combination leading to the top event to occur. <coughs> so, <coughs> if you if we go by the system breakdown concept, then you have seen that the system is broken into subsystem, sub subsystem and finally, component to part level and the basic events are primarily related to the component or the part related events. So, by, uh, by basic event quantification, we are trying to tell you that how do you quantify the failure probability of the component or essentially the parts of the component if you further break the component into parts. Okay. <clears throat> this is obviously a simplification by saying up to component or part level, but for the sake of understanding and for most of the practical purposes this concept works well. So, then uh, let us understand that one is our basic event. And then we say it is basically that in in any fault tree. So if you if you broke into different components, so you found out that this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. So these are the basic event, and this is the top event. And in between, maybe here you can create event that is your intermediate event that must you know. And if I say this is totally a system, then the from system to this component level. And if you if you consider the pressure tank system, pressure tank system, what we have discussed earlier, pressure tank system, and there you have found out lot of things like including pressure tank, then pump, then your relief valve, then discharge valve, then alarm, then pressure gauge 
and then switch and then timer so many things. So, when we have broken the pressure tank system into component we found out the relief bulb is component and then pressure gauge is component switch is another component also pump we have considered the component level bulb pump has lot of other its own parts or component. So, suppose we are interested to understand that what is the probability that pressure gauge will fail when this supposed to be supposed to work or what is the probability that the, run, the relief bulb will fail. So, these are what we are saying that quantification of basic events. So, the circle quantification. Okay. So, essentially we will go by the reliable mathematics given in the reliability engineering side and you have seen that the both the reliability and safety sites are mainly governed by the probability distributions. So, there are lot of commonality from mathematics point of view. So, we will be using those mathematics today. So, <clears throat> I just repeat this because already I have given the idea that system failure caused by failure of individual component or combination we all accept it. Accurate description of component failure or failure modes is necessary for identification of system failures because in fault tree or uh, you have seen this one. Now, risk assessment of a system involves identifying possible scenarios, accident scenarios that a system can fail and probability consequences at a, each scenario. Now, how do you get the probability unless you know the component level failure. So, the probability of occurrence of each scenario is obtained using fault tree analysis and probability of the basic events or root events. So, what is our objective is objective is to find out the probability of basic events using mathematical models. Okay. It is not a conceptual model or graphical model, it is a mathematical model. Now, now you think of the component, the component can be repairable, can be non-repairable. So, some kinds of valve which once failed cannot be repaired, it should be thrown and then new valve to be replaced by new valve. But there may be some, some valves which can be repaired also. So, so, which is not repairable that requires one kind of mathematics and another one which is repairable that requires another kind of mathematics. So, we will discuss in today's presentation or particularly this presentation that with reference to non-repairable units. The non-repairable case suppose the unit start at t equal to 0 it starts working and t equal to t it fails after that there is nothing more possible. So, that means this state is working in fact up to this it is working at this particular time it failed so it failed. Now, after that there is nothing more because this unit to be completely thrown off. But if it is a repairable one, what happen here the repair will start. Suppose again T equal to T 1 it is repaired completely. So, this is our repair time. So, repair this is working time, this is repair time and again then what happen after repair there will be working. So, this repairable concept this one is given here. So, a component have two states normal and failed. Normal mean working, failed means either it is it will be completely replaced or it will be repaired and reused. If it is completely replaced, those units are known as non-repairable unit, and if it is repaired and used, they are known as repairable unit. So, in the repairable unit, there are the important thing is that once suppose the normal unit it fails, fail state, this path will not be there for repair non repairable unit for repairable unit the component will be repaired and again it will come back to the normal state. So, as a result this is most general one that means one the system working it may remain in working state it may go to the fail state and remain at the fail state 
or after that when you it is repaired it will again come back to the normal state. If it is non repairable this part either it is in the normal state remain in normal state and fail state it goes to fail state and remain in fail state it will never come back to the normal state again means repair is not possible. Okay. So, we will discuss non repairable unit case today and the replacement will be such that it is as good as new and in case of repairable unit also later on we will see that the repair will be such that it, is, it will be as good as new. So, there will be variety may be as good as the old. So, that variety will be there also in repairable unit. For the time being now switch off the repairable part or repairable concept from your mind. What do you think that you have a you have components uh, which whose failures are the basic events. So, that component once failed it is replaced completely. So, that means it is a non repairable unit or I can say use and throw type of units. So, <clears throat> we will define important concepts here. Please uh, take your time and and pause the video if required and then see the what is written there and again you uh, run the video and understand what I am and, and listen carefully what I will be saying and so that your concept will be clear here. So, it should know if your concept is not clear later on you will find out lot of uh, confusion and something what is what you feel that obvious that may not be the correct one. So, what we are discussing here as the unit is non repairable the only event of interest is the instant at which the unit experiences failure. I said to you I have time t equal to 0 unit is under start and operating and at t equal to t suppose it fails. So, that means what is our interest? Interest is that when it fails uh, that means at t equal to t is failed that how many how long you uh, the component work. So, it is t time this instant is this total length of work is t. Now, second is let the unit A be initially at 0 I told you. Okay. So, the instant of time at which it fails it is a continuous variable and and if we represent it at by, by x. So, that means x greater than 0. So, the x what the x represent? x represent the time to failure time to failure x is time to failure. Suppose the component fail here then this time lead fit is x 1 suppose compo another component fail in this time x 2. So, the time to failure is x which is a random variable you do not know when it will fail. So, obviously, it is time dependent the comp component is time dependent case. Now, if you have identical components suppose same similar components several in number and you put them here at time t equal to 0 put them under test you may find that some will fail within x 1 time some will fail x 2 time some will fail x 3 time like this. So, at different time interval that will fail. So, now if you if you basically interested to know that how many fails at a particular time interval and and then plot against time what will happen. Suppose this is my time and at this time how many fails at this time how many fails at this time how many fails. So, you will get basically a frequency check cumulative frequency at this time suppose this much fail at this time this plus this total number of number fails is much this much like this you may get a curve like this where if it is cumulative frequency then it will be 100. Now, if you divide this cumulative frequency by total number of units put under a test at time t equal to 0 what you will be getting you will be getting cumulative probability that is what is given here f x f x t. 
So, that means at time t equal to, uh, that means x equal to t at this point at this point this equation what it will give you? It will give you the probability that a x means the time to failure is less than equal to t. So, as the components we are saying the components are identical in nature and we are interested in probability. So, that means you must have sufficiently large number of components and then within that period of time how many fails if you divide it by the total number of put under operation then what will happen you will be getting the probability. So, that probability what happen as all are identical component. So, we can say this is the probability that a component will fail within this period of time that is the cumulative probability f x. What does it mean then? That cumulative distribution function C d f f x t of the time to failure is defined like this. What is the what is the interpretation? Interpretation is probability that x what is x time to failure. The time to failure will be less than t less than equal to t the probability value is this. So, this axis is cumulative probability this axis is time. Okay. Suppose, you may be interested to know that okay, what is the, the probability that within in between two time periods may be as very small time you will create. Suppose, you create this is t plus delta and this one is this one is your t. So, then there are two probabilities with reference to t that mean probability x less than equal to t this probability and probability x less than equal to t plus delta this probability is this. Then if you create like this that mean cumulative probability here minus this this is nothing but that what is the probability that that in that the, the probability x is what time to failure in between t and t plus delta. In between what is the probability that how many that will fail failure will take place. Okay. So, similarly given to I am reading again giving time instant t and t delta delta where delta is a positive quantity the probability that the random variable x lies within this given the probability that the failure of a occurs in the time interval the probability is given by this means within this time interval the failure occurs that is the probability probability the difference between the two is this understood first probability x less than t this is t what is the probability this is the probability that the unit will fail the time to failure of the union repairable unit is less than equal to 2 is this probability second one is that within this interval t and t plus delta t it will fail what is the probability this is the, the difference is the probability now now if you just uh, do the another one what you will do that instead of here you are writing f x t that is the failure suppose you want that how many survives at t equal to 0 suppose n units are there and t equal to suppose t there are suppose n 1 then the n suppose n 1 units fail then how many survive n minus n 1 this many survive at t equal to t. Suppose I want to know what is the probability of survival. So, that means as, as components are identical component with the test I can say that the probability or that a component will survive after t time t this is nothing but the reliability of the component. So, this will be defined by the R x t. What is R x t? probability that x greater than t. What is x? x is the time to failure. If probability x greater than t that mean it is it will be it will be it will be surviving at surviving up to t uh, up till t x equal to t. So, okay. so <coughs> here I am saying that this is t what is the probability that it will fail in the other diagram we want to create where we will say it is R x t we will say R x t that mean what is the probability that it will survive. So, then in the you may get a distribution of like this 
okay, so that T it will survive that this is the probability. So, this axis when R x T things are like this. So, this is my survival function survival function and when it is that probability of failure then we are saying this is the case this is known as that is known as failure distribution. So, failure function. So, failure function and survival function if you see that the, 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 the probability value here one is probability x less than equal to 2 t another one is probability x greater than t if I add the 2 then it is the totality and as a result what happened that r x t plus f x t is 1 and that is reflected here. So, I mean if you know the cumulative probability distribution of failure then you also know the probability distribution of survival. So, one is the survival function or random variable x denoted by R x t will be defined like this. And you see that survival function what we have written R x t equal to C t by n. What is C t? Number of units functioning at time t divided by total number of units puts under operation at time t equal to 0. So, if, if I put 100 under test and at, at, the, at the end of one month suppose 90 survives then my reliability at time t equal to 1 month that is 0 0.9. Then what is the failure probability f x cumulative failure probability that will be 10 by 100 0 0.1. So, 0 0.9 plus 0 0.1 that will be always 1. So, so you, you take any any point here suppose if this is this is this is for the survival at time t. So, this is my survival and this is my failure probability uh, survival is the survival probability and failure probability. So, you will be able to find out this kind of relationships. Okay. So, what we have discussed then? We have discussed essentially that a non-repairable unit it will fail after certain time of operation and we want to know what is the time to failure. Time to failure is a random variable which is denoted by x and it is basically time dependent it is over time. Then we have to find out that what is the cumulative probability uh, function or cumulative that is failure or failure function then it will be f a capital F x t which is probability that the time to failure will be less than equal to t means the component will fail within time t. And what is the survival? Survival is reliability which is probability that the component will survive up to time t. So, it even if, if it fails it will fail after time t not within time t and the probability uh, of failure and uh, that uh, that cumulative probability and as well as the survival functions they are basically complementary to each other in the sense that the sum of the two will become one and <coughs> and that is what we have discussed in so far. Now, what we will do? we will see how this can be uh, means plotted the survival function and failure distribution. So, you understand it at t equal to 0 1050 units are under operation again I am telling you it is the identical units let if it is valve only one kind of valve it is so, then t equal to 1 if I say t in months the number of units survive is 1020 t equal to 2000 like this t equal to 99 2 and t equal to 100 it is 0. So, then what is reliability? Reliability is at time t equal to t how many survives means what is the proportion of surviving. So, at t equal to 0 we what will be the, what will be the reliability? Reliability will be 1. Why? The reason is 10 nothing failed it is just started. So, then at t equal to 1. So, how many what is the number surviving? 1020 how many you initially put? 1050 what is this value? This value is 0 0.97. 
if I go to the 75th month, so how many surviving? 180. How many was put uh, uh, under test at time t equal to 0? 1050. What is the ratio 180 by 1050? This is 0.17. This is what is plot here. So, at t equal to 0, it is 1, t equal to 1, it is 0 0.97, t equal to what is that 0 0.75, it is uh, 75, it is 0 0.17, t equal to 75, it is 0 0.17. So, if you plot t means this x, this row column versus R t is this column. So, you will be getting this curve survival function if I write like this R x t. So, now <coughs> what is F t? F t is R, R, R t plus F t equal to 1. So, F t will be 1 minus R t. So, 1 minus 1 equal to 0, 1 minus 0 0.97 is this, 1 minus 0 0.95 is this. Okay, you are getting some different values that mean it should be 0 0.05, but it is 0 0.047. The reason is here we have used 2 digit, here we have used 3 digits. So, it is basically that when we have done it in Excel, this one, but on other hand, okay, this plus this equal to 1. Similarly, if you come here 0 0.17 and this is nothing but 0 0.83, you see 0 0.17 plus 0 0.83, this is 1. So, at any time, any time you just check. So, where it coincides, it is 0 0.5 because probability of surviving and probability of failing that two will be equal. So, that sense. So, that means your F x t is this. This is survival. So, this way you will compute. I hope that you understand now. Other thing that t in month, reliability, number of component at time t, number of components surviving at time t, surviving at time t and unreliability. Then we will go to the failure density function. Let us start with this cumulative, cumulative f x sorry. Let us start with this one, this side t and this side f t. So, what is f t will be maximum it will be 1. So, this is 1, suppose this is the curve, this is your curve. Okay. Now, you think of <coughs> that t, this is t and this one is your t plus delta. So, that means, what is this length? This length is delta. What is this value? This value is here this value corresponding to this and this. This value is f x t plus delta and this value is f x t. The difference is this minus f x t. So, then if you if you divide this f x this my uh, subtract this minus this this minus this what you are getting you are getting the top portion and this divided by this is nothing but the slope. So, slope this minus this by this nothing but the slope of this with respect to what with respect to t. So, that means if you create something like this f x t which is del by del t into f x t the derivative of cumulative distribution function that is known as probability that density function density function. Okay. So, so if you do this finally, this you will get if this is the curve of f t versus t and if you want to do the same thing t versus f x t then you may get a curve like this. Okay. So, the suppose you want to get back the cumulative distribution what you require? You require to do integration and now f x t plus delta minus f x t 
we already seen that what is f x t plus delta that means number proportion surviving at t plus delta that means if n t plus delta is that is failed I am sorry that proportion failed at t plus delta that is that is that is the issue not number of surviving proportion failed. So, this then by n that is nothing but f x t plus delta. Similarly, at t it will be n t if this many failed divided by capital N. What is capital N? Number of total number of units put under operation. So, then this by this minus this is nothing but n t plus delta by n minus n t by n which is n t plus delta minus n t by n. So, that means this quantity can be written like this and already delta is there below. So, that means once you have data you can create f x t by using this formula. So, I, <coughs> okay. so that is number of failure at times t, number of failure before time t plus delta and then n t plus delta minus n t by n proportion of unit expected failing between this, this minus this by delta that means this minus this by delta. So, this one sorry this minus this by n this is basically proportion failing. I hope you understand yes or no yes I hope so anyhow. Now, now <coughs> come to the issue some more concept here what happened this descriptions I have already given to you that mean what we mean mean by this. Now, if this is the case then can we not write this that what is the reliability then reliability is integration of f x u d u and definitely it is t 2 infinite. Suppose, I have my distribution t can be 0 to infinite I have distribution suppose like this. So, this is my f x t. So, <coughs> at t equal to t this one if I take the probability of this from 0 to t from 0 to t f x t d t what is this? This will be integration of f x t this is basically f x t. Now, now what we know that f x t plus r x t is 1. So, again 0 to t already taken, but this portion or this plus this will be 1. So, that is why r x t is r x t is integration t it is not starting from 0 from t to infinite to infinite this you are using u here you can use t also no problem. Okay. So, t is changing from t to infinite f x u u d u. So, u changing from t to infinite that sense. Okay. So, <coughs> then another one so that means what happened if I know the failure density f x t I can find out cumulative failure you can find out the reliability function also survival functions also. And the relationship between that f x t and r x t once you capture you can write that f x t equal to del f x t by del t which will be nothing but minus del r x t by del d t d r x t by d t why because f x t is d by d t then 1 minus r x t. So, this is nothing but minus d r x t by d t. Okay. So, that means if you know f x capital f x t you can know you can find out the small f x t. If you know capital f x t you can find out the reliable survival function r x t. If you know the r x t also you can find out the f x t. So, there are relationship between f x t r x t small f x t. This is cumulative probability distribution this is reliability or survival distribution, this is failure density. Okay. 
So, few more things like your nth, nth moment of random variable will be this formula and why this is required you just google it or get through some books that details we are not going, but only thing you remember that we will be interested in the mean time to failure. Now, what is the mean average time that will that our component will survive? So, then using this moment equation the first moment will give you the give you this value. So, first moment is this 0 to infinite t f x t d t this is nothing but again 0 to infinite r x t t t. Okay. So, anyhow the expected value of x what is x? x is time to failure will be found out by this. Okay. So, now what will quickly we will see the that same example that all those calculation you see you have seen the L t is there n t plus delta. So, what is this 30? 30 is coming from that this minus this 10 50 minus 10 20 this is 30. Then these two will give you this the difference between these two is this difference between these two is this. So, that means n t plus delta minus n t. So, you are getting that number of units failed within within the time. So, 0 to 1 month within 1 month 30 units fail first month to second month that to second month 20 units like this. Then what is our f t? t n t plus delta minus n t by n capital N. So, this quantity is 30 by 1050. So, in this manner our n t plus delta minus n t is 10 for the 75th unit and if you divide this by 1050 it will be like this. So, there are two, two graphs given you one first one is the number of units failed within this small time interval. So, 30 20 like this and the x axis is time. So, then you are getting this kind of frequency polygon and another one is that related to the failure density. So, this density values is coming like this. Okay. So, let me go back if if we have done anything wrong. So, please remember we are saying that n sorry t plus delta minus n t by capital N into delta. So, that delta part I am not explained in the first case. So, this minus this is this by capital N is this. So, this minus this is this by capital N is this, but what is the delta? Delta is 1 that is why that is why what happened 10 50 minus 10 20 by N is 10 50 into delta is 1 minus 0 that is 1 this, but when you are calculating this. So, what is this 104 the difference between these two? So, then this is nothing but 180 minus 76 by 1050, 1050 is the even beginning one, but delta what is the delta value 5. So, be careful when you, you, you develop this probability failure density, be careful that if the, the t the difference is in unit then this will be 1. So, you can write that n t plus delta by n t by capital N that is what at the beginning, but in order to understand this concept later on after after 5 the 5 units are increased. So, this 5 will be 5 time units difference is there. So, that 5 time units this is delta equal to 5 from 10 onwards. So, this also required to be divided. So, that means our f x t is n t plus delta minus n t by capital N into delta you may forget this part. This delta will be the difference time difference here. Initially from 0 to 5 only one difference is there, 
but at the later state the difference is 5 so 5 will be divided keep in mind most of the many times we may commit mistake here then what is our uh, mean time to failure so you just see what is your mean time to failure t the mean time to 0 to infinity t f x t d t so that is what is shown here so mean time to failure integration 0 to infinite t f t d t so we are doing it first one is our t the in between the middle value 0 to 1 the middle value we are considering suppose 0 to 1 the middle value then what is the f t value f t value is this point this then what is the d t value the time interval delta here it is 1. So, that is why 0 0.5 in between 0 1 the time is 0 0.5 that is that is our t then what is the f t value f t value is 0 0.02 is this and what is the uh, that interval 1 minus 0. Similarly, if you come to the last one here you see what is the middle value the t value 99 plus 100 by 2 99.5 what is the corresponding f t value density value 0 0.001 what is the delta t value the difference 100 minus 99 this. But if you come to let it be the uh, let it be the this one 75 fifth one then what is the what is the your uh, this one t value in between that is 77.5 what is the probability value probability value is this and what is the interval value is 5. So, those things you have to consider while writing this this is basically this equation in numerical term is this I hope you have understood this one. Okay. So, <clears throat> so then what what we have uh, discussed so far we have discussed uh, interesting things from cumulative failure distribution to survival function to failure density function to mean time to failure all related to the component which is or unit which is non repairable ok and these are the plots. So, let us see some more um, one more concept and then uh, we will finish our lecture today. Another one important very very important one is hazard rate or instantaneous failure rate the failure rate actually hazard rate instantaneous failure. What we, we are defining that that probability of failure per unit time at time t that means, that the suppose you you think that time t up to this the things have survived the component has survived. Then at t plus delta delta within this small unit time. So, we are interested to know what is the probability of failure for this unit time when the component has already survived up to time t. So, that one can be written like this that we are creating one another component or another uh, that parameter or another distribution as such which is r x t and if you multiplied by this the interval that delta small unit then this can be written like this number of failures during t plus delta by number of survival at t equal at time t. So, this is known as probability instantaneous failure rate or other way I can say the hazard rate hazard rate means that your component has survived up to time t. Now, what is the probability that it will fail uh, in between t and t plus delta. So, that is what is <coughs> given here. So, number of failures during t plus t and t plus delta by number of survival, number of survival up at time t it is nothing but the reliability. So, if this one 
can be written like this number of failures during t and t plus delta so t plus delta the failure is n t plus delta and it is n t so the difference is this one now then <coughs> then l uh, then if you if you if you want to write that reliability part then up to time t that what is the lt other way we can write ct ct no problem you write ct here we have used ct that is number of components surviving up to time t so this by this it is nothing but the reliability number of survival and then we are writing that basically how many put under operation you are making the you are making the that proportion so a n t plus delta minus n t by this so then <coughs> then what happened a n t plus delta by n t into this into if you multiply delta that will become basically f x t into delta by r x t so r x t into delta because what is f x t f x t is n t plus delta minus n t by delta into n what is this quantity n t plus delta minus n t by n so this is nothing but then this delta will come here so that is what you are writing here the top portion you are writing f x t into delta bottom one is r x t then r x t into delta 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 will be cancelled out so r x t equal to this so that means probably failure density by the reliability is hazard rate and which is minus 1 by r x t into d del r x t by del t correct because f x t is minus del x t by del r t ok. So, so uh, here number of failures during this by a n u right that will be better otherwise you will be confused. So, number of failures during t and delta t t delta t n t delta t by n t. So, n t delta t this divided by n and this this is the quantity. So, fine that <coughs> that r x t is very important concept which is known as hazard rate and you will find out that this the if you actually really uh, want to draw the curve that r a r r x t vis a vis t you will find a usually find a curve like this which is known as bath tub curve bath tub curve so this there will be three regions this is early failure early failure this is the constant failure constant failure and this is worn out phase worn out failure means you think of any com uh, any component or any product or any car everything that at the beginning you will find out that there will be problem more problem and then slowly that it will it will basically uh, stabilize and then after that be after certain age it will worn out will be more and it will it will basically uh, that quick quick failure rate up to if survive up to this then immediately in the next instant of time or next small time interval the probability of failure will be very high ok and here what happen you suppose the initially the probability of failure is that but in next in, uh, in uh, small interval of time the probability will reduced ok. So, this is bathtub car which is a very interesting one and depending on <coughs> actually that hazard rate has so many that increasing failure rate if failure rate is IFR that the conditional probability increases with its unit age. Similarly, constant means it is not decreasing or increasing stagnant decreasing means with age it is it is the failure rate is decreasing like here early phase this is decreasing this is constant this is increasing. So, IFR region C A C F R region and D F R region. Okay. So, 
we have plotted this one already we have found out that f t r t is known. So, r small r t will be small r t this will be nothing but f t by r t. So, this way we have computed and finally, you have got this plot for the data. So, this is our hazard rate. So, actually that it should be it should be maybe like this it should be like this, but the from the from the our hypothetical data we got this. So, this is this should be early uh, decreasing failure rate early failure constant part increasing part and that is what is the un, what is to be understood from hazard rate. Hazard rate or instantaneous failure rate is a very very important concept for for the um, that comp component failure analysis. Okay. So, I hope that uh, you um, understand and it is a really a good exercise to follow through. Please practice all the numeric uh, that data given to you, use the formulas and you yourself uh, plot this in excel and check if there is any anomaly please report to us. Thank you very much, thanks a lot.